Were you expecting an exploding pen? We don't really go for those anymore. Hey everyone, Nick Brick here with a 007 build. The signature handgun used by James Bond, as well as the iconic watch in the classic shooter GoldenEye, here's the LEGO Walther PPK and the Q watch. The Walther PPK is a German handgun first released in 1930. It appears in the majority of the Bond films as Bond's sidearm, and fires a 32 ACP round. The Q Watch serves as the pause menu in GoldenEye on Nintendo 64. It has a menu interface that projects over the watch face. The LEGO PPK is just over 6 inches long, weighs only 4 ounces, and contains about 230 parts. The Q Watch is 8 inches around. In the films, the PPK is originally issued to Bond by the Quartermaster and Dr. No. Since then, it's been a firearm associated with Bond and, really, espionage in pop culture. It appears in the 007 games as well, typically renamed to the Wolfram PP7 instead. Even at this tiny, easily concealed size, this LEGO PPK has a few functions that were definitely hard to pack in. These functions include a moving trigger, moving hammer, and a removable magazine. Also, as you can see, the Q-Watch is wearable. Now let's show some of the details and techniques in both of these builds. The PPK was built around a frame that is primarily one stud wide. Looking from the top, you can see this. This one wide framework has studs facing either side to support the slide and grip details. The most difficult detail to design was the ejection port. Playing around the spacing all just to make it look right, I wanted to keep this gray curve and line up the muzzle, and several iterations later I was able to make these parts line up and look believable. The grip was shaped with some wedge plates, this was intentional for two reasons. One, it's really sturdy for a pistol this size, and two, the studs on them simulate the grip texture of the actual PPK grip. A one stud wide core means the grip can only take a one stud wide magazine, but I kept the details like the holes and the grip extension on the mag. On the Q watch, the display on the watch face is built with several different translucent colors to appear as the health and armor indicators, plus the green screen that still shows the watch hands underneath. The watch band uses these 1x2 plates with round ends. The rounded ends allow the links to flex, and are held together with bar pieces at every single link connection. I built the band with these pieces instead of LEGO standard watch bands, or their new DOTS bands, because this way the actual linkages on the Q watch could be replicated accurately. Rounding out the presentation is this LEGO case to hold the watch and pistol. This was suggested by my friend Blake, who I had many conversations talk about bonded film in general. Shout out to him for this idea. The case started with the forms being built around the pistol and the watch, then a black case was built around those. Honestly, I think this kind of presentation is sharp and way cooler than a simple display stand. Overall, building these replicas was quite nostalgic. I grew up watching so many Bond marathons, and the first FPS games I played were in the Bond series, Agent Under Fire, Night Fire, but I actually didn't grow up with GoldenEye and N64. <laughs> Don't hate me. <laughs> One of the earliest LEGO replica weapons I made was the Wolfram PP7, probably back in 2005, 2006. While Halo got my start with posting my LEGO replicas online, it was the 007 games that got me started, well, overall. Now, let's fire the PPK. Before I go, just wanted to give a huge thank you for 30,000 subscribers. Thank you all for watching, liking, sharing, suggesting ideas. Really, it means more than I can express. Subscribe for more LEGO replica builds. Also, like, comment, 
and share if you enjoyed the LEGO PPK and Q-Watch.